In this week's episode of the Stock Scores Market Minutes, we'll talk about how money is being made in this market crash. I'll do my regular weekly market analysis, give you a sense of where the market is going to go from here. We'll do a market scan in search of opportunities to make money going forward and look at the day trade of the week on SFIX. So early in the cycle of this market crash, I did a video where I talked about something I call the crash reversal pattern. And it was a way to make money from the market having sold off very sharply. I presented it as an opportunity, a really a great opportunity to make money from the emotion and the volatility that came with the market crash. And it has been working really well in recent weeks because we are recovering from that emotional hangover. Plus, there is still a lot of volatility in the market. So I wanna begin by sharing with you just a few comments that I've received by email in the last week or two talking about what people are finding as success with my crash reversal pattern. These are things that people emailed me. I didn't solicit them. I think I just had my best week ever, 37,000. I'm assuming that's dollars over 130% return, making $50,000 in a morning. These are the kinds of emails, and I've got others. These are the kinds of things I'm receiving. And I wanna show you again what we are doing with this pattern because it's working really well. It's primarily a swing trading pattern. When we say swing trading, what we mean is we're holding stocks for more than a day, not a day trade, but not typically more than a few weeks. It's typically in and out, often in three or four days, it could be perhaps a week or two. Now remember the stock market crash brought opportunity because it brings with it volatility, which is great for traders. We need lots of price movement. And also because emotions are high, investors make mistakes. They send stocks down too far because of fear. Now these big moves can therefore happen in a short amount of time. And we've seen many examples of stocks moving 40, 50% in just a single day or two because of the emotion. Now the key to profiting from this market crash is not to chase after strength because the market is moving up for a few days then it's moving down for a few days. And if you chase stocks that are strong for a few days, you might be buying them at their top just before they're about to pull back. So that's sort of concept number one is we wanna get into stocks when they're just starting to turn higher, not when they have already been moving higher for a few days. So we wanna find those stocks that are just starting to turn around from weakness and be certain to dance close to the exit door because they may turn back lower very quickly. We've seen many examples of stocks that go up, say 50% in three or four days and then fall right back down again. And it's important therefore to be on top of some of these stocks. So I'm using this pattern on two different intervals. One is the daily interval and the pattern as you may remember from when I talked about it, uh, I don't know, maybe four or six weeks ago, is to look for stocks that are in these sharp sell-offs that build a rising bottom and then break higher from a rising bottom. And you can see that this stock did that a few times where it broke a downward trend line, built a rising bottom, and then broke higher from the rising bottom. And if you want more information on that, go back in some of the older videos on this Stock Scores YouTube channel and look for that crash reversal pattern. I've talked about it a number of times in recent weeks. Now what's most important on this one is it gave us our first buy signal just under $5 and it came close to hitting $10 uh, on Friday. Now I want to emphasize that this is not a stock to buy now because to buy it up here you are chasing strength. The stock has been strong for six weeks, five weeks anyway, and it's now coming into resistance where it's likely to get stuck and you can actually see on Friday that it closed off of its highs and that demonstrates the importance of not chasing after strength with these stocks, but rather buying them when they're first starting to move out of this pattern. Now we can also apply this pattern on a 13 minute interval or even a 30 minute, some kind of intraday interval. But again, what we're looking for is that downward trend line and a break from a rising bottom on the downward trend line. And we can draw it in many ways. You can see here, there's a rising bottom higher than the previous low and then starting to move. Now remember, this is a 
30 day, 30 minute chart. So each one of these candles represents half an hour of trading. But look what happened there at the end of April. It started to build that optimism, those rising bottoms after being negative for a while, had these positive breaks to the upside from rising bottoms in around the you know dollar ten dollar twenty range and then you get this acceleration to the upside this stock more than doubled just in five or six days and it all started with that initial break from a rising bottom after breaking a downward trend line now i would absolutely not buy this stock up here because it has gone parabolic the trend has gone from being linear to being a curve to the upside and that sets up for a likely pullback. Now, am I saying it will pull back on Monday? No, not necessarily. There's no breakdown yet, although certainly it could pull back on Monday. We wanna watch the, the upward trend line that's in place right now for a break. So if we were to break down below 255 or so early next week, then I'd be concerned that it's gonna pull back to its trend line, which right now is around $2. So that's the concept. Look for this break of a downward trend from a rising bottom with some excitement, some abnormal price action perhaps, and that is the key to making money in this market right now, taking advantage of all of the volatility. All right, let's get into this week's regular analysis of the US markets to begin. Here is a intraday chart of the S&P 500, and last week I had some concern because we had broken down from that little bit of uh, uh, upward trend line and I felt like we could see some weakness this week and we did start the week with a little bit of weakness but what was impressive was that the buyers held and they kept the market from moving lower and ultimately stocks moved higher through the week so that's a positive sign because the buyers defended this market and we didn't get the sell-off I don't think we're out of the woods yet because we still have to break through those highs and we have rallied through the week into that high point I expect we'll get stuck under 295 early next week and perhaps see another little bit of a pullback. Maybe not as much of one because if we think about the pattern, that's our rising uh, trend line and we could just pull back into the 285 zone and still be quite healthy. So that's what you want to watch for. Likely we get stuck at 295, probably pull back for a couple of days, but ultimately we are building optimism in the short term. So I do think that the US stock market looks pretty healthy in the short term. Now the longer term chart shows that we've made a pretty substantial move off of the lows already. Of course, there were the pre-crash highs and there were the after-crash lows. And through this period, we've had great swing and day trading opportunities, even accumulating those longer term position trades has been working well. We've seen some great bounce backs. I think because the market has moved up quite a bit off of the lows, you have to be quite selective. Pursue those sectors that haven't participated in this bounce. Energy, some of the airlines, some of the travel-related stocks. They've perhaps stabilized, but they haven't really participated yet. And I think that's the next place to look for that crash reversal pattern. Looking at the small caps, you can see that the bottoms are rising. That means the buyers are in control in the short term. We've broken that downward trend line. And so as long as we can hold this upward trend, I think buying those small cap stocks is a pretty good idea. It's been working really well in recent weeks and until the trend line is broken, I would stick with that strategy. On to the Canadian markets, taking a look at the TSX 60 on the short term chart, the intraday chart. And again, rising bottoms, the buyers are in control. We are coming into resistance much like we have on the S&P 500 probably gets up there and gets stuck, but unless this cycle of rising bottoms is broken, I'm going to remain short-term optimistic. Looking at the longer-term chart, very similar to the S&P 500. We had a big sell-off. We've bounced back, gained back more than 50% now of the losses. And until the upward trend is broken, I'm not too worried about being a buyer. But again, one of those things I emphasized at the top of the video today is that I do not want to chase strength. I want to find stocks that are just starting to move from here, not that are already way into their upward trend, having made the early bounce. And so again, some of the energy sector stocks, airline stocks, travel related stocks, those things that haven't yet participated are perhaps going to be where the best opportunities lie as the market starts to get over the virus. TSX Venture, 
in a nice little upward trend, largely on the back of mining, which has done well as money is being printed by central banks. That has made gold go up and some of those junior miners have been doing well. There's been a little bit of strength in the cannabis stocks as well. So I think generally you can pick and choose in the TSX Venture micro cap stocks. Just be picky. And I'll say it again, do not chase strength. That is risky. On to currencies, looking at the US dollar, it's pretty stable, basically back where it was before the virus set in. And it looks kind of like it wants to just head sideways. What I would watch for on this chart is a break out of this little pennant pattern. If it makes a strong break one way or the other, that will telegraph what direction the US dollar is likely to go. On to the Canadian dollar, and it made a pretty good showing this past week, kind of making its own little crash reversal pattern. We've had this sharp sell-off, we built a rising bottom, and we're trying to break out from that. It's not clear cut, but I do think that the Canadian dollar is a little oversold and due for something of a bounce back, getting back perhaps to that 73, 74 level. A lot of that is gonna depend upon what happens in oil, because of course oil is a big part of the Canadian economy and oil has been absolutely abysmal of late, but when we get to the oil chart, we'll see if there's any sign of hope there. Interest rates, pretty uh, low obviously, but perhaps breaking this upward trend line there, and that tells me that we might see interest rates start to pull back a little bit. Their upward trend line, the linear upward trend line is there. So there's quite a bit of distance to fall without really breaking the upward trend line. I think that perhaps we're a little overdue for some profit taking in the bond market as money doesn't worry about hiding so much and instead perhaps starts to look for some of those equity bargains. We may see some money come out of bonds and back into equities. Commodities, gold has been in that upward trend for some time. It is still in the upward trend. I think it's risky to chase after stocks that have been up a lot, but if you own some of these names and they're in upward trends, stick with them because the trend is up. The trend is your friend as we've all heard before. And so I see no reason to be a, a pessimist about gold, but I don't wanna chase after strength on stocks that are up dramatically already. And looking at oil, you can see we had a little bit of stability the past maybe two weeks here as we're into this little bit of a sideways trading range. Downward trend line is being flirted with. So we could see a crash reversal pattern on oil. We could see a break of the downward trend line from a little rising bottom. And if that happens, again, look for opportunity in those energy names. I think that is a place to consider. Hasn't happened yet but it could happen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Keep an eye on the market here because there is an opportunity building, I believe, in the energy sector. And finally, the fear chart. This one is an important one because it demonstrates how investors are insuring themselves against market weakness. When this goes down, generally speaking, traders are taking money out of the insurance of buying the uh, VIX short-term futures. What's important is that this is starting to break down through some support from falling tops. And that implies that fear is coming down and therefore confidence is coming back to stocks. And so a pretty good sign that perhaps the market will continue to stabilize. So my ratings then, neutral long-term on US stocks. We've come up quite a bit. I think that there's individual stocks that have opportunity. Um, I've put there bearish. That really isn't what I feel about the US stock market. I think it's pretty good, I would say more neutral, medium term, short term, but we do need that breakout from that pattern. We've risen into resistance, good chance it pulls back for a couple of days, but I do like it looking out perhaps more than a couple of days as long as the upward trend line isn't broken. Canadian stocks, neutral on both time frames. gold, bullish, long term, neutral, short term, oil, neutral on both time frames. The markets have held up well in the face of adversity this past week. Optimism is slowly building and should lead to higher prices as long as the upward trend is not broken. Now gold is stable and it's in a long upward, long-term upward trend, but you know, be careful that one day we don't have to take some profits in that area. Opportunity for a bounce back is building in oil stocks, so keep an eye on oil. Fear is coming down, but it is still elevated. We shouldn't necessarily get too cocky yet there is still lots of potential for volatility. All right, so now I wanna do a market scan on stock scores. And what we're gonna do this week is run the crash reversal pattern 
I'm going to do it on the Canadian market because of the heavy emphasis of oil stocks on the Canadian market. We'll see if we can discover some of those names. I don't know what we'll find, but let's go and take a look at the market scan tool on stock scores. And of course, this is something available for use by stock scores members. If you want to know how to become a member, just go take a look in the trader training menu there. There's information in that area. We're going to run the crash reversal Canada scan, run the market scan. We can run this on the US side as well. There's going to be lots of crash reversal patterns on the US side as well. And as I go through these, what I'm looking for is or are stocks that are breaking downward trends from rising bottoms. And so, for example, if we look at Shaw Core Limited, we can see the very steep downward trend that was broken here, but then we had the break from the rising bottom right there at around $2. And that was perhaps six weeks ago, and it really hasn't gone anywhere yet. If this stock can start to move up through two, maybe 210, I think it's a really a, a nice setup. And so this is one that you'd want to keep a close eye on it. I personally wouldn't buy this yet, but if it had a move up through 210 on Monday, it would be quite interesting. And that's really the pattern is we just keep looking at stocks. There's a lot that made these crash reversal patterns perhaps uh, a week or two ago that haven't gone anywhere yet, and they still present an opportunity, and we're just waiting for that pattern to start to show fruition. So here you can see downward trend line, break from a rising bottom, it went up a little bit, it's pulled back, and now it's starting to move up again. You can see just barely a little bit of strength coming in on Friday. And so I think because we're basically at the price of the original signal, this is another one to consider here. It was only up 5.5% on Friday, but it's at good support. I think the risk reward trade-off on T.CHR is very good here. So I'll zip through these a little quicker. Um, Interflex, EFX, pretty good. A little bit of concern about the resistance here still uh, just under $7. So I would be a little bit cautious because of that. Uh, Payson, uh, it's okay. PSI, again, it made its break maybe a week and a half ago. That was a nice pattern break. It pulled back, maintained the cycle of rising bottom. So it's still healthy, starting to move up. These are, to me, trading opportunities where they might play out over a number of weeks. And so you have to take some of these with the expectation that it may take some time for them to build. And if you are just looking for bargain hunts, looking for stocks to throw in your retirement portfolio to hold for weeks, perhaps even months, I think these are good ones to consider. Here's CIX Financial made that break about two weeks ago. Nice pattern, pulled back to support, held support, and now starting to move up again. I like T.CIX. I think I may have um, recommended this one a couple of weeks ago, hasn't gone anywhere yet, still healthy. I think it has lots of good potential. Similar thoughts on Air Canada. This was one that I talked about back here when it first broke from the rising bottom. It went up a little bit, it's pulled back, and now starting to stabilize. Remember I said, look for opportunities in those airlines, in the energy names, in the travel names. They're the ones that haven't kept up with the recovery, but are starting to show some bids now. All right, we'll jump back to the market scan, or pardon me, to the presentation and look at the day trade of the week. This is really for educational purposes, nothing that you can benefit from now, except perhaps the lesson that the market gives. And in this case, we had the, on this case, we had the crash reversal pattern. In some ways here, we had an action candle breaking a little pullback on a two minute chart with rising bottoms on the chart. Now, those that have followed my day trading strategy know that the key is these little pink dots. That is my action candle indicator. Again, you can learn more on the Stock Scores website about that. We saw that break just after 12 o'clock on Friday. The position size a little larger than we often do for every $100 of risk required. Actually, it wasn't 830 shares. I believe it was 1110 shares. I may have written that down wrong. I can't quite remember. Um, anyway, the capital required was 18,926. But of course, because this is a stock that is marginable, you can borrow two thirds of the capital from the broker, therefore only having to put up $6,300 of capital on this trade. It earned 6.2 RR reward for risk into the close. That's a $622 gain on a $6,300 capital required for a 9.8% return on a one day hold. 
Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for May 11th, 2020. Hope that you've enjoyed it. Hope that it was informative. Helps me a lot if you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel and trade well.